Today we're going to go to uh, Luke chapter 15. And I want you to know something. God loves you. He loves you more than you could ever, ever know. And, you know, I know things are crazy in this world today. I know it seems like, seems like there's a lot of people running amok. But I want you to know today that God is still able to take care of you. He's still able to, to give you the strength you need. Matter of fact, he promises that he'll give us peace that is that are totally different than the world. The world cannot, you know, the world's idea of peace is Prozac. But God can give you the kind of peace through Jesus Christ that lasts. And I just want you to know that he loves you so, so very much today. Today I want to I want to read a passage that is probably going to be very familiar with most of you, if not all of you. But I want to read Luke chapter 15, beginning with verse 11. We call it the parable of the prodigal son. It says, Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his, his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he is, has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look. All these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the, the son of when this son of yours who squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him? My son, the father said, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Lord Jesus, we ask you today to speak your word. And God, I ask you to speak only your word. Use me as a vessel for your honor. 
And Father God, I pray that every heart and mind will be open to receive what you would speak to each person. Lord, I pray that, that, that every person here would gain a fresh revelation of you and your love and your faithfulness. And Father God, let use all of me today. Don't let me go off on any kind of tangent, but let your words and only your words come out of my mouth. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yeah, here we've got this, this rich man, had two sons, and one of them decides one day, yeah, I, I don't want to wait until my father dies to get my inheritance. I want it now. I want what I can get when I can get it, and that right now is when I want it. And so he decided you know, he was going to go out, he was going to make his own way, he was going to do his own thing. And he was going to go out and do it in a way that rebelled against his father. It dishonored his father. You know, whenever we do anything, that you know, I know as, as young people, a lot of times when we're young, when we're, you know, especially if you're in school or getting out of school, a lot of times we, we have to, a lot of people have to sow their oats, so to speak. And we want to go out and, and try to find our own way. We want to do our own thing. And we try to find our identity separate. Sometimes people try to find it separate from what they were taught. And that's what this man was, was doing. You know, what he, what he did in going out, you know, all of a sudden, his father became, he lost some of the standing in the community because, you know, the standing in the, his position in the community was based a lot on his wealth. So all of a sudden, he's lost half of his wealth. You know, he gave it to his son who was rebellious, and he let him go off and do his own thing. And while he was out there doing it, see, the thing we've got to realize is we carry our family name. And everything we do is represented, we're representing our family. And so he was dishonoring his dad. When he was out there hooping and hollering and doing his thing. And so... Yeah, everything was going okay for him, or so he thought. He was partying, he was having different women every night and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, yeah, everything was fine, but all of a sudden, lo and behold, here comes coronavirus. I said that because that's where we're at today. And, yeah, everything, all of a sudden, he had spent all this money, and now things get bad. And he's, he's broke. He has no money. And he's hungry. He's hungry. He wants something to eat. I mean, hey. And so he realized, he, he goes and finds, so well, I need to find a job because I'm going to starve to death. You know, at this point, yeah, he's still trying to make his own way, trying to do his own thing. And so he goes and gets a job, but the job he gets is as a pig farmer, as a worker on a pig farm. He didn't even own the pigs. He was just a worker on a pig farm. And the thing about it is, you know, with the Jews, pigs were considered unclean because, you know, the Lord told the Jews not to eat pork. You know, pigs were scavengers. I mean, I do like a ham biscuit myself, but thank God Jesus said that not to call anything clean that he calls clean now. He changed it in the New Testament. But the thing about it is the Jews were not supposed to eat pork, and if they ate pork, they were unclean. So here this man's out there, and he's feeding these stinky, smelly pigs. I don't know if anybody here's ever been around a hog pen, but it stinks, especially, especially on a 90-degree hot summer day and so he's out there and he's feeding these pigs and while he's sitting there he's throwing this corn to these pigs and he's looking at those kernels of corn and he's thinking or those pods that he was feeding and he said I just bean pods or whatever it was he said if I could just have 
some of that pig food. <laughs> I'm just so hungry. My stomach's hurting. I'm, I'm just having pains of hunger. And he starts thinking, I guess maybe he started thinking just how low he had stooped, how, how low he had gone. Here he is. And he's gone about as low as he can get. He's, he's so low. He's so hungry. He's, with, he's, he's lost everything. He's, he's blown his inheritance. He's lost. So he thinks the respect and honor of his family because he's gone out and he's dishonored them by being rebellious and doing all this stuff that that people look down and it was dishonoring and, and it was a reflection on the father because he didn't do what was respectable. And so he's so low that he's sitting there looking at these pods. He's thinking, I just want to eat what these pigs are doing. He's, I guess he's probably thinking, I just want to stick my face right in there with them and eat. I'm just so hungry. I mean, we're talking about eating with stinky, smelly, Pigs. Oh, I know. I know that Arnold was cute in Green Acres. I know Babe the pig was a cute little pig, but these were hogs. These were pigs that was out there in the mud. And so, yeah, he said he gets to think it. In verse seventeen, it says that he started coming to his senses. He said, "How many?" of my father's hired men have food to spare. And here I am starving to death. So now he's thinking, I've blown my inheritance. I don't even deserve to be called a son anymore. But if I could only just go and maybe just be a servant, if I could just serve my father as one of his, his workers, his servants, then my father's a gracious man. He, he treats his servants with respect. He makes sure they have something to eat. And what he gives the servants is a lot better than what I'm giving these pigs, what I'm, what I'm wanting to eat because I'm so hungry. And so he said, if I could just go back to my father, I won't have the status of being a son. I've blown it. I, I've really messed up. I've disgraced my father. I've disgraced my dad. I've, I've spent all his inheritance. I've brought shame on his name by my behavior. But if I could only just go back and even be one of his servants, that's what I deserve. I don't deserve anything any better because I've blown it. So, so he sets out he sets out on this journey, and, you know, as I'm reading this story, and I had thought about this illustration even before you guys suggested it today, but I've got this, we've got this male cat, he's named Bo, Bo Jangles, but we call him Bo for short, and he started out being chicken, so Bo Jangles is better, trust me. So anyway, this cat gets out of the house last week. And Amy couldn't find him and ended up leaving him outside when she went to work at Jay's. And so I looked for that cat. I looked for him three hours that night. I looked for him every day. You know, every chance I got, I was calling. You know, we posted it. And finally this morning, I kept asking God to take care of it. Finally this morning, I look out about 520. I've got nothing. I always looked out the doors, praying he would see. And I thought I saw him open the door. He runs in just purring all over the place. He was the prodigal son. <laughs> so he, he came, he decided to come back because he was hungry. But that's what happened to this man. This young man here, he decided to go back, throw himself on the mercy of his dad, his father, and just try to not get a status he had before as a son, but just just trying to at least be counted as a servant and at least have something for his belly because he was hurting, man. It, 
I mean, you could hear his, his stomach churning for miles around. Yeah, just carry it on. I mean, he was starving. <laughs> so, you know, it says that he set out, and he said he was going, verse 18, he said, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and he went to his father. But guess what happened? It says, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. And his father ran to him and said, you disgusted, and sorry son, why'd you take take my money and run off and spend it why you just get out of here I don't want you around no he didn't say that do you know a lot of a lot of people would have done that they would have said yeah you don't deserve to be here anymore you know you've blown it but not the thought not this this young man's father he sees him and it says while he was still a long way off his father saw him and was filled with not hate and not anger since he was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son. He threw his arms around him and kissed him. See, this son, I don't know that this son even took a bath. I don't know if he got the pig, the, the pig mud off of him. Pig mud, you know, it stinks because combined with pig waste and, and stuff and all that, that's far, I don't need to go any further. I don't know if he cleaned himself up, but nothing, you know, whether he was filthy and still covered in all that, that mess, his father ran to him, and instead of being angry, his father was full of compassion. His father loved him. And his father, it says he, he ran to his son, he threw his arms around him, and he kissed him. I know how I felt when I found when my kitty cat came home. I grabbed Bo up, I hugged him, I told him I loved him. All the time Bo was just a purring away. But this father grabbed his son and he hugged him and he kissed him and he told him he was so he showed that that he loved him more than all the stuff that he the son had squandered or anything. His son told him, he said, in verse 21, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. In other words, he was saying, I brought disgrace on you. I did, I did what you taught me not to do. I did it because I thought I had to. Because I wanted to go find my own way. I wanted to do my own thing. I spent your money. I lowered your standard in the community. He said, I'm, he said, I'm not fit. I'm not worthy to be called your son. But the father, verse 22, it says, The father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. They were throwing a party instead of him running him off and saying, you're not even worthy. You don't need to be here anymore. He, he, he put a robe on him. What that robe represented, that robe represented a covering for his sin. That robe covered him up and said, no, even though you have done what was shameful, what was disgraceful, even though you went out and dishonored me, I'm putting this robe on you to cover your, your filth. 
and to show you that I love you and that you're still welcome. And if that wasn't enough, he took a signet ring. He took a signet ring which said that showed the family. You know, they had that signet ring that identified the, each family. He took his signet ring. He put it on his son which said, you're still my son. You're still part of this family, and I love you so much. And then he chose one of his best calves. He didn't just say, say go get that scrawny calf and kill it. He, he chose the best, one of his best calves. He told him to, to go and kill it. And he said, let's celebrate. There's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents, one sinner who turns away from his sin and turns to God through Jesus Christ, than over 99 righteous people. Well, everybody, everybody wasn't happy about what was going on. It says, verse 25, it says, Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. And when he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, What's going on? And they said, Your brother has come. He replied, And your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry. I mean, I can imagine what he was thinking. He don't deserve this. He don't deserve this. He left. He took his inheritance and he left. He doesn't deserve it. He shouldn't even be allowed to come on this property anymore. He, he didn't want it anymore. So the older brother refused to go in. He was mad. His father went out and he pleaded with him. He said, son, why don't you come on in? But the son answered him. He said, verse 29, he said, father, look. He said, all these years I've been slaving for you and I've never disobeyed your orders. He said, I've been faithful to you. I've never done anything wrong. I've never done anything to dishonor you. My brother did. My brother disgraced you. He said, I've never done anything like that. He said, I've worked hard for you. I've helped keep this, this farm, this, this ranch, this plantation going. He said, you've never, he said, all these years I've been slaving. I've never disobeyed your orders. And yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But, but now, verse 30, it says, But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitute, comes home, this son of yours, who has disgraced your name, he says, you killed a fattened calf for him. He's thinking, why are you doing it for me? Why do you do this for me? Why do you show me how much you appreciate what I'm doing? And in verse 31, he, he tells his son, this is the father's response. The father said this. He said, my son, the father said, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. All this stuff that's left, it's all yours. And he said, but, but we had to celebrate and be glad. Because this brother of yours was dead. And now he's alive again. He was lost and is found. I remember I was so concerned that something had happened to my kitty Bo, and I was afraid that I wouldn't see him again. And then he came home today, and I was so happy. And that's the way this dad was, this, this father was over his son. He said he, was, he had left everything. He had abandoned the family. He was dead, but now he is alive. He was lost, but now he's found. I'm going to tell you something today. 
This story that Jesus told, this story is a perfect picture of our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, the Apostle Paul wrote that that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, when we come and, and ask Jesus to come in our heart and forgive us and open our hearts to the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit in our lives, the first thing the Spirit of Jesus begins to cry out from within us is Abba. Abba. Abba meaning, has the meaning of our word daddy, which is a personal term. You know, a lot of people could be a father. But it takes a special, special person, special man to be a daddy. And this man, this father, was a daddy. He loved his son with a, an undying love, a love that even though he took everything he had, or half, all of his inheritance, took half of what the man owned, disgraced him in the community, said he didn't want anything that left and not have anything to do with him. He still loved him and came and covered it. When he came back, he covered his sins and welcomed him back into the family and through a celebration. And I want to tell you something. That picture of our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Daddy, is the true picture of who God is. I mean, God doesn't condone sin. Jesus died not to condone sin. Jesus died to to forgive us of our sins, to set us free so that we could live a life worthy of Him. But the, th the awesome thing about it is our Heavenly Father is there waiting for us. I guarantee you every single person here, best of us older ones, have strayed at least once in our life from where we should have been with God. We have, a bad, we have at least one time in our life have abandoned our dad, our father. But I want to tell you something. Jesus loves you. Your heavenly father loves you so much. Your heavenly daddy loves you so much that he sent Jesus Christ to come and to lay down his life for you and I. Matter of fact, when Jesus Christ was going to that cross, when he was being beaten and bruised and falsely accused, spit on, he was he went just as a lamb is to the slaughter. He did not even open his mouth. He did not yell, injustice, injustice. He stood up and took everything that was dealt out to him. And he did it because he loves you, because God loves you, and God wants to be your heavenly daddy today. And the Lord wants you to know today that if you're listening to this message, He wants you to know today that if you have strayed off the course, if you're trying to make your own path and you have left, left the covenant relationship with your Heavenly Father, or maybe you've never ever, ever really surrendered and had one in the first place, it kind of sounds like with this prodigal son, he never truly had that kind of relationship. It, it really looks like his brother didn't either because his brother didn't realize what he had. And he was angry because he thought his brother who came back was getting some of what he had. He was caught up in looking to get his inheritance. He was doing it because he wanted his inheritance, basically. And so, you know, maybe neither one of these sons at this point or up until this point had realized what it meant to have a daddy, a, a true relationship with their daddy. But when he saw the love and forgiveness that their dad had in his eyes and, and his embrace and, and what he did and putting that robe and that signet ring on this, this son who had abandoned him, he realized they begin to realize just what it meant to have a daddy-son relationship. I want to tell you today, no matter where, how far you have strayed, no matter who you are, no matter where you are today, if you have either never 
given your heart to Jesus, or maybe you've walked away, maybe you're sidetracked, maybe you're caught up in all the junk that's going on in the world today, instead of caught up in seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and his purpose for your life, then I want to challenge you today to come to Jesus. Yeah, I know you're sitting there thinking, well, I smell like a pig, I'm filthy, I'm dirty, I'm disgusted. My stomach's going making all kinds of noise because I'm hungry. <laughs> but you know, the thing about it is Jesus loves you, and he has that robe. He has the Father's robe, and he's ready to cover you. He's ready to put it on you to cover your stinkiness, to cover your putrid, putrid filthy self with his righteousness. Yeah, all of our righteous acts are filthy rags. It's only through Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit that we're ever made good enough. And so today, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to come to Jesus. I want you to come to the Father through Jesus Christ. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I want to challenge you to come to Him. I want to challenge you to understand, I want you to know today that you have not gone too far. You have not run away too far for Jesus. The only sin that's not forgivable is when you continue to reject Him. I want you, I want to challenge you to come to Him today. If you have been like this prodigal son, this son who left everything, went out and, and doing everything that he wasn't supposed to do, and now, he's, now you know that you need to come back. I want to challenge you to come to the Lord right now and lay everything down at his feet. Let him come and ask him to forgive you. Come and allow him to put his robe on you. See, one thing I want to point out, this son who had gone out and disgraced his father, spent all, his, you know, all of his inheritance, half his father's money, this son came back and he was he was sorry for what he had done. He said this, he said, I have sinned against heaven and against you and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. He said, make me like one of your hired men. When we come and we are truly sorry for what we've done and we desire to be forgiven, Jesus has his arms open wide. Matter of fact, he opened them so wide that he spread them out and died on a cross. Today, I want to challenge you. If you know that you are not where you need to be with Jesus, if you know there's any unforgiveness in your heart, or you know that you've had rebellion in your heart, you need to lay it down and ask God to forgive you today. You want to come to your heavenly daddy and say, Lord, daddy, I'm sorry. I ask you to forgive me. Then I want to challenge you to come today. Or if you're kneeling, if you're watching on your computer screen or iPhone or wherever you're at, TV screen, I want to challenge you to kneel beside that TV and ask God to forgive you. And when you turn away from that stuff that you were doing, turn to, turn to Jesus and run after him with everything that's in you. And I promise you this, he will forgive you because he loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's everybody bow your heads today. Lord Jesus, we ask you today to search our hearts. God, let your Holy Spirit search our hearts if there's anything in any of us, any rebellion. Lord, we know that your word says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And Lord, we, we want to repent of all rebellion right now and all, all our disobedience. And we ask you to forgive us. Lord God, we know that Whenever we say we're yours and then we go out and, and sin like the world does, we 
Confess to go out and deliver sin. We're bringing disgrace on your name. And we're crucifying you all over again. Lord Jesus, I pray that every person who has heard this message, that you would touch hearts, that you would change hearts, Lord Jesus. And Father God, I pray that every person that needs to come to you would come to you. Lord, we all need you. We all need to come to you. And I pray that you would help each one of us to surrender all of our old self to you so that you can come and cover us with your new self so that we will be what you have created us to be. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory and honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Today, today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing just a, a portion of a song that we used to do years ago when we did a, an Easter celebration. 